What's up, everybody? This is Riley Hill from SlatePad.org, where we talk about all things tablet. Today, we'll be talking about iPad OS 17.2, which is out today. This is a bit of a smaller release, but there's still some new features we can go over. So let's go ahead and get started. The weather app gets a few improvements, starting with three new widgets. The weather app kind of lives its best life to me as a widget on the home screen. So it's nice when we get some new options. So let's look at those real quick. Swipe over in the widget picker, you see there's this new detail widget. There's a new daily forecast widget. And then there's a new sunrise sunset widget. The weather app also gains the ability to show precipitation amounts for the current day and for the future 10 days. So if you go into the weather app and you scroll down and tap on one of the days in the conditions box, scroll down, you'll see there's a new precipitation totals box and it shows you how much it's rained or snowed for the given day. When you swipe over, you see the total updates, which just be really helpful for planning to get an idea how much it's gonna rain or snow for that day. There's a new map for seeing wind speeds and wind directions. If you tap on the wind platter in the weather app and scroll down, you'll see this new wind map, which if you're into tracking that kind of stuff is presumably pretty useful. And lastly for the weather app, we have the new interactive moon calendar. So if you go ahead and tap on the moon platter, I've been calling them platters, I don't know what they're actually called. You see this detail view, when you scroll down, you'll see there's a new calendar. And when you tap on each day, you get an update of what the state of the moon is for that day. So if you're into tracking that stuff, this might be a little bit helpful to keep an eye on the different statuses of the moon over time. Next up, if you're into widgets, we get a new clock widget, which sounds more exciting than I think it is because it's just a digital version of an analog widget we already had. So if you go into the widget gallery, you see it here. I mean, it's there. I honestly think it's kind of ugly. I won't be using it, but it's again, a nice option to have. I'm never going to complain about more options. So new clock widget. There were a couple of music related changes in this release, one of which is the addition of a new smart playlist, which is your favorite songs playlist. Now, if you're like me, you're probably surprised that this wasn't already a thing, but I'm glad it's here. So anyway, you get a new smart playlist. It collects all of the songs you favorited in the music app, does what it says on the tin, bit overdue, but glad it's here. Another new feature is the ability to exclude your listening history from influencing your recommendations or recently played during a focus mode. So how you activate this is you go into settings, go into focus, select one of your focus modes, scroll down, and then go to where it says add a filter, and you'll see there's a new music option. When you tap on that, you get the option of whether or not you want what you listen to during this focus mode to contribute to your recommendations. There were a number of PDF improvements that were revealed with iPad OS 17 in the summer, um, and now with 17.2, PDF autofill is finally here. So as an example, I've downloaded what's clearly an example PDF from some random website that has a form on it. I open it in the, uh, the Files app, and you see at the top, there's this banner here that gives me the option to enable autofilling this form, something you have to toggle on. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tap on that option up here. And then you'll see, I'm going to scroll down, that the fields in the form automatically are enabled. And when I tap in them, I get my autofill options. Simple as that. iPadOS 17 brought the Health app and Health Kit to iPadOS. And now 17.2 is adding the ability for Siri to interact with your health data. So for example here, I'm going to ask Siri how much, I'm sorry, how tall I am. By default in 17.2, you get this prompt that says enable it in health settings. I tap on that prompt and there's this new checkbox in settings under Siri to say allow Siri to access health data. In this case, I want that, so I'm going to turn that on. Go back to the home screen and just ask Siri again, how tall am I? And she comes up with the correct answer and confirms I am still short. 
There were a few new features in this update that were more difficult for me to cover. Basically all of the improvements to messages like the catch up arrow that lets you jump to the first unread message in a thread or the contact key verification feature or even the sensitive content warning for stickers and messages. But outside of that, that's everything that's new in iPadOS 17.2. Like I said, not a huge update, but still got a few new features. That's gonna be it for this video. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for sticking with me. On your way out, if you could like and subscribe, that would have really helped the channel out. We're doing a lot more tablet related things here. Check us out on slatepad.org where I do my long form writing about tablets. I'm also on social at slatepad on threads, pretty active there, and at slatepad on Mastodon, just kind of getting started on that one. Again, my name is Riley Hill. Thank you for joining me and I will catch you in the next one.